Okay, I just wanted to make a quick video on how to fix your Brondel bidet. Uh, ours was constantly running on and off. It would kind of run by itself a little bit. The problem is there's a leak in the valve on the inside and uh, I've temporarily fixed it a few times putting silicone grease on the o-ring but I needed to replace the o-ring. Uh, first thing you got to do is turn off your bidet, unplug it, turn the water valve off, flush your toilet to get the water out and then unhook the hose to your bidet and then you just reach down push the button on the side and the bidet slides off and then I'll take it down and set it up for the next step here okay now that you got it ready to work on to get it opened up you remove the screw here the screw here you're not going to have to undo any of the wiring on the inside or anything it's, it's a pretty easy fix the hardest part <coughs> is uh, undoing these little clips. There's a like a catchy thing here. You have to kind of push it in and open it up. I put one screwdriver in there to hold that and then you got one, two, three, four, five, six more you gotta finagle with. You kinda gotta just spread it open. It's kind of a real pain. Actually let me put something in up here. something in. Another flat tip would help. I don't feel like getting up to get it. There we go. Got all four of those loose or six. We gotta get this one. Okay, come on now. There we go. This whole thing just flips open. You can rotate the seat down. Our seat's broken here, but anyway, flip the whole thing down. You don't have to disconnect any of the wiring. Come down here. You're replacing the O-rings right in here. Let's see if that's on the screen here. I'm gonna move this over some. It's this little valve down here. Take the these two screws come out. Let me make sure that's on the screen here. There. Let me just unhook this. It's going to get shaky, but I'm not sure if this is showing up. <clears throat> you take this screw out right here. There's another one out right here. Then you're going to pull the Phillips here. The screw out from the here and here. So let me set this camera back down and uh, and then I'll uh, show you. Okay, now that I got these two screws loose, you just pick this up and, well, it's not loose all the way here. Let's see. I'm uh, trying to hold the camera still. So you slide this back, you see there's a spring right here, just be aware of that. It can go in any direction. This is a number 11 O-ring here. You can buy that at any hardware store, pretty much anywhere. The hard part is inside of here, there's a little piston. This thing here hooks into the spring there. This, this O-ring doesn't seal when it's continuously running on and off and you cannot buy this at any store so I was really frustrated with Brondell I tried and tried and tried to get them to tell me what size this was or have them ship me one and I guess it's some top government secret or something so anyway I ordered a set of or not a set but a different size o-rings from the o-ring store so I can compare this to uh, to them but it's not a standard size o-ring so let me go compare the sizes now okay I just spent like 10 minutes trying to compare these different o-rings that I bought um, I took the o-ring to the auto parts store where my friend measured it with their uh, 
digital micrometer we came out with the size of 7.1 or 7 for the interior diameter and uh, 1.82 millimeter for the thickness of the ring so from the o-ring store I ordered a variety of different sizes not sure how accurate our measurements were but it turns out that the one I'm going to use is actually very close to the measurements we took it's the 1.8 millimeter thickness the rubber thickness and by um, let's see 7.1 millimeter interior diameter I do have another one it's a one, little bit thicker it's a 1.9 millimeter by 7.2 so if this original one doesn't work or that you know my new one doesn't work I will try the next thicker size rubber for it but this one should be good the 1.8 millimeter by 7.1 millimeter and then you gotta grease it up with some silicone grease you can get that anywhere hardware store and the other big o-ring is a number 11 which comes in any kit or you can buy that anywhere but it's this little one that's hard to get so let me get this greased up and then I'll put it back together okay I got this all greased up I put new grease on here too so basically to put it back together you just set this inside of here Oh, it's kind of sticking. I got the grease on my finger, so it's sticking to everything. Uh, have your screws ready. Lift this up a little bit. Put the shaft into the spring. Come on now. Push it together. Then basically, you just screw it back together the way you took it apart. That started... I mean, I was so frustrated with Rondell, they would not give me the information for the size of that O-ring. They want you to mail this whole thing in, spend a ton on shipping and all that, just to get a 10 or 25 cent O-ring. I can't remember how much. I had to spend $10 on shipping, but since you can't buy these anywhere locally, um, I was happy to spend the shipping if I don't have to spend $300 on a new bidet. So you screw that down. Make it tight. Tight. Check these. Not too tight, you know, it's all plastic. This thing's kind of a pain, but you just gotta make sure that your cord is still sitting in the restrainer. Sometimes you'll put it together and the cords out and then you got to take it all back apart again. Just tip it up. Basically it's going to push it together, snaps all together. Put the two screws in the back. The first time you take this apart, it's, it's actually a real pain trying to get these little clips out. At some point I cracked my bidet just makes it easier to take apart but it's fine uh, let's see and then you just go back and slide the thing on and plug it in and turn on the power button and of course you got to hook up your water hose and turn your valve back on that's it man 10 to 25 cent o-ring I can't remember which that one cost exactly and uh, you're back on the back on the toilet Okay, I had to update this. Uh, the other O-ring was allowing a constant drip, so I ended up putting in the 1.9 millimeter by 6.8 millimeter, and that seems to be working fine. So that's the one you want to get.